Hey everyone, it's Nicole from Wiki. Welcome to our NFL preview with Jacob from Tripod. Jacob, we're uh, we're only looking at the uh, the two games. Sorry, we're looking at two games this week, right? Just to <laughs> just get that bit. That's right, right mate. Firstly, uh, welcome home. I know you're back, land down under after a big trip overseas to India, and uh, I know Big Bash is heating up. But I got to tell you, so is NFL. Now we're into the playoffs, and it's Super Wildcard Weekend. So there are six playoff games. This weekend, if you allow me to cross promote, uh, later tonight, that is Wednesday night, I'm doing a playoffs extravaganza preview with Nettie, who does a lot of great NFL tipping and content through the tripod. So we're going to touch on a heap of kind of playoff special markets and talk Super Bowl predictions. Today with you, we are going to key in on the two games that will take place Sunday Aussie times. So we've got a playoff double header that kicks things off. Yeah, I've got to say, I am back home in Sydney um, and looking at these looking at this uh, odds comparison tool for a moment there i was looking at this thinking try scorers and it's getting me in nrl zones <laughs> we won't get into that just yet probably in february we'll start talking about some of the plans for the uh the nrl season but let's get straight into it um should we look at the uh the texans and the browns first yeah sure and for those scoring last week uh, we didn't hit the value play but you did get that double up i suggested jonathan taylor did score with juicy odds on dabble now we look at the Browns, who are minus two and a half point favorites at Houston. This is the battle of the coaches of the year. So, uh, in fact, Maddie, the undertaker in our group, did tip the coach of the Browns, Kev Stefanski, 15 bucks he was about three weeks ago. He came into a dollar 10. The Browns have had five different quarterbacks this year, still won 11 games. Disregard last week because they were already locked into playoff position. They played their second string and they did lose. But last week may have shifted the coach of the year market. It's not a done deal because the Texans won about three or four games, I want to say, last year. Second worst record in the league out of 32 teams. Second longest odds to make the playoffs this year. But new coach D'Amico Ryans did just that, got them in. Now uh, they've got the offensive rookie of the year, QB, leading the way in CJ Stroud. But Ryans did a fantastic job. So I say, even though the vote's are already in, give coach of the year to whoever wins this matchup. Um, but both sides have done really well. I uh, So I talked about Cleveland last week. Disregard that result. The Texans played an all-or-nothing game to get in and did get the win, survived a late drive by Indy. Not only did they secure their spot, then they went on to watch a day later. The Jags get upset, which propelled the Texans to division champions and uh, got them a home playoff game for this one, which is certainly an advantage. But they are still, well, depending how you look at it, they're a young upstart team with nothing to lose, a very energized city, and um, that could make them quite fearless. But uh, by the same token, they're not as experienced as most of the other sides that are in the playoffs. And I do think the experience of the Browns might get them home. I also think the fact that the Browns' elite unit is no doubt their defense, that travels. That being said, Cleveland has had a couple of struggles this year and played some higher scoring games than they were on the road. But to be fair, I still think the Browns have the best defense in the league. Uh, some will look at the matchup that between these two just three weeks ago. They played in Houston and the Browns won by 14 points. But you've got to take that with a grain of salt because CJ Stroud was out. Uh, of course, he is back now. It gives Houston a very real chance, but I don't feel they're the same team since they've lost tank dell to injury so that's why i do like the browns i would lay the two and a half and i'll look for a browns player to have the first touchdown and of course the story of cleveland is that the fourth quarterback that they found this season was joe flacco flacco off the couch and he has turned back the clock and he loves he loves a couple of his players one of them being amari cooper but cooper is only back this week off a heel injury and when it's a do or die game you don't always know, is he fully fit or is he just gutting it out because, you know, it's it's the playoffs and it's win or go home. So I don't want to back Cooper. I want to back uh, Flacco's other favorite target, which is David Njoku, the tight end, and he's had a career year. So Nicole's highlighted him there. 12.50 for first touchdown. Also, I think you can bring it up now. Anytime touchdown is worth a look too uh three dollars right for an any time and that could be a good same game multi-leg and i also think amari cooper out there could be a good decoy and if joku can get single coverage or certainly in the red zone 
uh, Flacco's going to give him opportunities and give him uh, a jump ball, give him a chance to to register a score. So Njoku is my favourite play, and I like the Browns in the opening match of the playoffs. Awesome. And just before we switch to the other game, um, as always, I'm just going to have a really quick look at market value. You let me know, should I skip ahead, or is there anything that jumps out to you in terms of market value for, for any time touchdown scorer? I'll tell you, I think as we discussed in our NBA chat just before there's a couple of gremlins in there um i was looking at the list of games and like not all the opposite opponents were necessarily correct and you look even here we've got um player name double ups and and opponent detroit um yep. so a couple just to be aware of um but no nobody that jumps out at me and i'm probably less inclined to go for a super long shot in the playoffs because you do get outliers and you get surprises in random regular season games but in the playoffs teams are going to their best players uh early and often so i am going to go more so for the most well-known players and the more modest odds i'd say awesome not no stress um and the other game that we we're going to look at is the dolphins at the chiefs there we go there's too and many this, games in here we've got to clean yes. this up i'll let you've you go got it there it. uh <laughs> it's also a rematch they play this year in fact they played in germany and it was a fluky oh, wow. game. I tell you, the Chiefs jumping out to a 21-0 lead, that was really on the back of their defense. And then the defense just held on in the second half when the Chiefs didn't score again, but they held on to win by a touchdown. I do like the Chiefs to get it done again, mainly not so much because they won the first time, but because they're the better rested team. They actually got the win last week with nothing to play for, but they played essentially the Bs uh, in L.A., Whereas the Finns had it all to gain and lost a brutal one against Buffalo, which uh, relegated them from what would have been a two seed all the way down to a six seed and a road game that they didn't want to be involved in. And after the season they've had, they shouldn't have uh, found themselves uh, needing a wild card to play in the playoffs. Now, the narrative around the Chiefs, who are the Super Bowl defending champions, is their receivers are hopeless. And, and that's that is a true narrative. Uh I've talked about that this year, why I wanted to bet around the Chiefs in the AFC. But when your wide receivers have been so bad, I do feel like that leaves some upside because I do feel like guys can have a good game here or there. When you've got the best quarterback on the planet, uh he can if he can just give the guys a chance, if they can actually snare a couple of balls in this one, then I think they could win pretty well. So the Chiefs, three and a half to a four-point favorite at home. I do like them again. I like the favored team. And I will actually back a Chief wideout for the first touchdown. In this game, I'm going Rasheed Rice at 11.54. You found in there, th what was that, 2.55 anytime. Again, not a bad uh, same game multi-leg. And for yeah. first TD, I think we'll find 11.50. The odds comparison tool is showing us best price. Now, Miami can score for sure. Uh, couple of questions i mean they've got injuries across the board um but we, we know for sure that the defensive line the pass rush is, is decimated for miami and if it wasn't for turnovers and clock mismanagement by buffalo i think that miami would have been lit up even worse last week and that was at home now you're going into kansas city you've got mahomes off a week rest you know the Chiefs have got a point to prove i mean they're the champs and this is most likely their only home game of this playoff. So I think they're going to come out strong. And again, I'm looking at Rasheed Rice. If you do go back to any time touchdown, I mean, the other guy that I strongly considered is Isaiah Pacheco. And you can see he's uh, under $2 most bookies, but 218 on sports bet. Again, you could definitely throw him in because gets uh, the lion's share of carries at running back, but also Mahomes loves to look for him in the past game and he is an explosive uh, weapon. Well, too, the interesting, so. interesting thing with Pacheco, I, I can't say um, can't say much about the tip, but I will say something about the price. And as you would know, after looking at the odds comparison tool for a few weeks now, it's really, really uh, like not common to see the favorite for a market fifteen percent higher on one bookie than the others. So Pacheco being two dollars eighteen, there he's a dollar ninety or less on the three other bookies that we've got. So um, yeah, sounds like a, a good value pick. A little bit like last week, like Taylor was a dollar eighty-two mm. anytime. It's like some people think that's too short to really call it value, but when he was a dollar sixty or lower everywhere else, like that can be one of the best value bets available. And I could actually see Miami if they get behind, they could 
really get dump trucked here. So I uh, think that, yeah, Pacheco, I mean, I wouldn't talk you out of a, a same game, but that has Pacheco and Rice uh, yeah. both registering TDs in this one either. Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm back home, so I've got a lot more free time. So I'll have a look at these and probably get on myself. It's a it's a good way to finally start watching and and, and getting into it. But um, as always, guys, Google Wiki Link Tree, the podcast that we're doing now, the odds comparisons, all you can see on your screen, everything else, our Discord, our socials, all free to check out from Wiki. Just Google Wiki Link Tree. Um, and obviously tripod punters tips forum, more than 25,000 people on there. Awesome tips for a whole bunch of sports. Um, from our point of view, um, or from my point of view personally, I'm back in Australia. So I'm enjoying watching the BBL every night. The BBL is heating up as heating up as well. I've been putting some tips out on um on the tripod Facebook group as well. So check us out and uh we'll catch you next week. Cheers, mate.